so excited. Happy Thursday, everyone. What a great show we have tonight. But we always have a great show, don't we? It's as regular as me after eating seven bran muffins. <laughs> so this monologue is about risk. There are people who take genuine risks, and there are others who only pretend. <laughs> yeah, she's a real Nelson Mandela. Well, more like Nelson from The Simpsons. <laughs> Anyway, when we think of risk, we usually think of young, edgy types taking chances, daredevils, soldiers, SEAL teams, someone who will eat a bowl of chili before boarding a five-hour flight. That's Cat. What? And the opposite of risk? The old, the retired, sitting on the veranda, sipping Arnold Palmer's while buying gold and silver from William Devane. <laughs> but now it's reversed. The old are the new young, and the young are the new old. Cancel culture has created a Benjamin Button effect in terms of behavior of older generations. As we get older, we're taking more risks, and it's the younger ones who aren't. Here's John Cleese talking about humor and risk-taking. A lot of comedians now uh, are sitting there, and when they think of something, they start thinking, oh, could I get away with that? I don't think so. So and so got into trouble when he said that or she said that. You see what I mean? And that's the death of creativity. If you're worried about offending people and constantly thinking of that, you are not going to be very creative. So I think it has a disastrous effect. Mmm, Monty Python. In comedy, it's the older guys battling the safe spacers. Whether it's Cleese or Ricky Gervais, David Spade, Colin Quinn, Nick DiPaolo, Dennis Miller, Rogan Chappelle, Jim Brewer. You also see J.K. Rowling, Johnny Rotten, Eric Clapton, John Waters, Van Morrison. These are old people taking actual risks against the group speak of wokeism. And then there's one other guy leading the pack. And who could that be? <laughs> I hate it when the producers slip that in. <laughs> you guys, really stop it. So these old farts are standing up to the mob, just like Frankenstein's monster, except instead of facing pitchforks, it's smartphones. Again, it's not the young, it's the old. Maybe it's because of wisdom, or maybe it's relief factor. <laughs> but I prefer to call it balls. Meanwhile, it's the young who must have every whim catered to them like a bride on their wedding day. Last night, a Minneapolis club called First Avenue canceled a show by Dave Chappelle, citing public outcry, meaning they got a silly letter from some purple-haired gnome with a BMI of 158. <laughs> the club caved to the most low-risk nonsense, a change.org petition demanding not to platform transphobe Dave Chappelle. The petition reads, Chappelle has a record of being dangerous to trans people. And First Ave has a duty to protect the community. Chappelle's actions uphold a violent heteronormative culture and directly violate First Avenue's code of conduct. Well, if that statement was any more full of crap, it would be the floor backstage at the Westminster Kennel Club. <laughs> and does Chappelle have a record of being dangerous to trans people? I mean, they're talking like they just found Caitlyn Jenner's bones in a crawl space under his house. <laughs> but Chappelle is being dangerous. He speaks his mind. That's real risk these days in the face of the faceless mob. He is the daredevil, unlike anyone who signs that petition. Meanwhile, the man who tried to murder him in L.A. is charged with misdemeanors. But when you think men could give birth, then everything is backwards. <laughs> so these delicate daffodils claim they must be protected imitating real people at real risk, just like AOC in her invisible handcuffs. So why not just skip the damn show? How hard is that? And even if they went, the only danger they face is that there's not enough room for their emotional support dogs. So let's be frank. Simply claiming you're trans or non-binary, it's not risky. It's not illegal, that's for sure. You get double the movie roles and double the bathrooms. And the media embraces you like the new flavor of the intersectional ice cream. Try our new ginger with nuts. <laughs> in the old days, in the old days, young people did risky things. Now they just write petitions, throw public tantrums, and pick a pronoun for their Twitter bio. 
<laughs> they were only strong in a large group wearing a mask and carrying a bike lock. But that petition worked. It got Chappelle booted. First Avenue states, we believe in the diverse voices and the freedom of artistic expression. But in honoring that, oh, we lost sight of the impact this would have. We know there are some who will not agree with this decision. You are welcome to send feedback. All right. So here's some feedback. I hope your club goes under like one of Ted Kennedy's dates. <laughs> Yeah, you believe in the freedom of expression only if Patton Oswalt played there and put everyone to sleep. <laughs> so that's my theory. Old people have now become the young people, and young people, the old. This feels like the right time for a skit. Hey, Grandma. Just calling to make sure you're staying inside and double masking, just in case. Don't be such a p Grandpa and I are going out tonight. I can't rip shots of tequila with a mask on. Grandma, those words are violence. Plus, drinking tequila is cultural appropriation. Why don't you just stay inside, eat some soup, and watch Jeopardy like we are? Yeah, okay, Boomer. Why don't you save us a table at the early bird special? <laughs> Actually, you know what? Never mind. Grandma and I gotta go. It's hot girl summer, and I'm taking pictures for her OnlyFans. <laughs> So, as the young prefer security, the old are out taking risks. They're having fun, saying what they want. Larry Kudlow just asked me to go hang gliding. <laughs> in the nude. Again. Now, again. Now, now, maybe the old have less to lose or a lot more money. Or maybe it's just hard to be afraid of a guy with <laughs> The young people, though, demand safety and conformity. Remember this famous picture? White BLM protesters surrounding a woman at brunch, demanding she raise her fist? That's as conformist and risk-free as it gets. And that's a lot of people these days who embrace the opposite of risk, which is might makes right. Why do they join the mob? Maybe they're scared of the mob turning on them, or they're just doing what they think is popular, like everyone that pretends to like NPR. <laughs> or maybe they like the power and the attention. Or maybe they suck. In the old days, you'd say, those who can't do, teach. Now it's those who can't do, cancel those who can. Either way, it's obvious how they never make these public demands one-on-one. -on -one. It's always in packs, because there's safety in numbers. Even if those numbers are a bunch of zeros. She'll leave her kids in the car for a glass of Pinot Noir. Rawr. Fox News anchor, Julie Badara! <laughs> His name is Cass because he's always on the money. Former White House National Security Council aide, Cass Patel. <laughs> he leaves women in stitches because his jokes make them slash their wrists. <laughs> Writer and comedian Joe DeVito. I wrote that. Thank you. She's like a stick, skinny, sharp, and your mom says, leave her outside. Yeah. Fox News contributor Cat Tip. <laughs> Julie, it's good to see that you made it here in one piece. I did. Yeah, you had it's a, been rough, a rough week. Yeah, been a rough week. Yeah. Waking up in different places, not <laughs> sure where you are. Stuff yes. like that. Well, Kat's couch, I know where that is. Yeah. It's in her living room. <laughs> yes. She was welcome at the hotel. to stay. Yes. 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 I never made it back to the hotel. Yes. Um, and you are, while you're uh, going on these drunken binges, mm. <laughs> you're also raising young people. <laughs> that makes you a hero. Are you raising you. them to take risks? Uh, mm, yes. a little bit, but I'm, I'm not ways, raising, like, whiny, woke brats. That's right. what I want to say. Yes. Regarding this uh, Chappelle thing, which is absolutely ridiculous, 150,000 uh, tickets, in fact, no, 1,500 people bought tickets, 150 protested, right? There you go. So you got 1% who actually cared about this, mm -hmm. and, and that's your way of doing it. Instead of, you know, complaining, just don't go, mm -hmm. or maybe show up, catcall, and, you know, the last time somebody stormed the stage at J Dave Chappelle's show that went well yeah so maybe do that mm -hmm. and and maybe when's your next show 
Not, uh, not after you just told people to run up on stage. Oh. I'm not telling you to show this. Um, it, 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 those people that signed the petition, they weren't even buying tickets. No. I mean, it's not like they, they matter. The club... See, I think the story here is that the club is cowardly. They're just incredible. What a bunch of losers. Especially when you see the rebound. <laughs> yep, thank you. I'll take it. <laughs> I like getting applause because it eats into Cat's time. <laughs> what? Sorry. Cash! Oh, no. Cash, what? What you said, oh, no, for? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I got nothing to add to the Chappelle conversation. Why? Uh, I kind of lost respect for him when Mayor Bowser in D.C. invited him out for his birthday party, and, they, and Mayor Bowser at the time had made everyone wear masks starting the next morning. <laughs> and everybody was like, what the F? And yeah. so now people are complaining about his show getting canceled. I mean, I really just don't give a yeah. You know, do the show if you have a pair of balls. Like, who cares? Stand outside and do it. Well, he did actually do the show. He moved to another uh, another venue. That's an interesting opinion. You're mad at him because he wore a mask in D.C.? Because I wasn't I wasn't allowed to. Oh, I see. <laughs> what do you think about my theory that young people are now old people and old people are now young people? Well, I'm going to stump you. So what are, like, middle people like you? Uh, thank you. <laughs> well, I think I'm old by comparison. I mean, I'm in my early 40s, so. <laughs> I mean, the good thing about me, I thankfully have my mother's genetics and Indian people never age. So I'm going to just stay young, but you call me old. So I don't know. Are we going to fight now? Yes. <laughs> I would win. You probably would. I know karate. I'm going to bring her in, though. I'm tagging her. <laughs> <laughs> I like it when yeah. you, I, always kids always said, I know karate. <laughs> that's the, that's, that's, I know karate, and then you, you didn't. And karate never worked, Joe. <laughs> it never worked. You always got your ass kicked. Um, you claim to be a comedian. We've seen some evidence. <laughs> Um, feel free to comment on the Chappelle thing. Sure. Look. You can trash this whole segment like Cash Patel just did. <laughs> um, but that's well, what they want. I can relate. <laughs> I, I have had venues uh, cancel shows of mine, but that was due to low ticket sales. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was able to move it to the parking lot. We had a good time, and I enjoyed the tips from validating people's parking. <laughs> um, <laughs> Julie made a good point that it was 150 or so people. It's an online petition. Right. Anybody can do <laughs> You can't even crumple it up. Yeah. It's yeah. so <laughs> pathetic. So these venues, I don't know why they book comedy, because they could spare themselves having to make these groveling... Up we are so... The harm that it's... It didn't cause anybody harm. And what it did was it pissed off a bunch of crybabies who have tremendous egos, mm -hmm. because if you don't want to go to the show, it's very simple. Don't go. Yeah. That's not enough. They want to make it so no one else can go. Mm -hmm. And comedy is supposed to be upsetting and disturbing. It's supposed to violate your expectations. That's what makes people laugh. And the funniest comics out there now, people like Andrew Schultz and Tim Dillon mm -hmm. and Kyle Dunnigan, mm -hmm. they're really funny and they say some things that sometimes you laugh because you just don't know what else to do. You know, um, it's, I think it's, I said this on the five, it's a compliment when you're finally being roasted. Yeah. And I think that you're, that you're now accepted as part of society. But I want to, before I go to Kat, uh, one last question to you. What happened? Why can't the club eat, eat the cost of this? Like, isn't there a contract involved? You know? Well, I think the, the cost is a, a, an emotional cost for the club that they've invested in being these. Uh, the idea that. But I mean, no, but I mean, if you get a contract, I mean, look, yeah. I'm going to speak in Florida this weekend. Yeah. And, if some, and, and so I, you know, I'm going to keep the money. Yeah. You know, it's like, that should be the deal. It's like, if you cancel me, sure. I'm keeping the money. Right? It's not... It's, <laughs> I do. Yeah. It's, it's not like... Um, it's not like a water main broke in the yeah, venue. Exactly. <laughs> it's just, there's no act of God clause that says, are you a... <laughs> well, then you don't have to pay. Exactly. Cat, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, excellent uh, acting, uh, playing both a young and an old woman in the same skit. Thank you. I am very talented. You are extremely <laughs> talented. Uh, so what would you, what, what do you think of that theory? Uh, do you believe it or what? Or would you rather address the Chappelle story? Okay, thank you for giving me a choice. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm pro-choice. Yes, there's something to it. I think that there's something to it. I also just think that the reality of is it is, of it, all of it is that there's no such thing as a safe space. Yeah. It's just not possible because... You know, these hundred for these 150 people, apparently a safe space is one without Dave Chappelle in it. Mm -hmm. But Dave Chappelle's safe space 
might be one where he's, you know, work doesn't get canceled a few hours before, moves somewhere else, and it's yeah. all stressful because everything really is subjective. Uh, and I, so it's impossible, but it's also not good to keep yourself in your comfort zone all the time mm -hmm. because then you don't learn anything new, you don't grow as a person. And also, safe stuff, honestly, is boring. Mm. It, it is. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> But there, you can create safe environments to do dangerous things. Yeah, I think it's important that you do. Yes, excellent. <laughs> hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.